The following presentation is a production of Ride the Wave Media. Step into the world of A's for Adversity, a podcast where we explore the journey of motherhood. Join us weekly as we navigate the intricate garden of self-discovery amidst the trials of motherhood. This is your space to nurture your identity and bloom. I'm your host, Jen Banks. Hey there, welcome to the podcast. Oh, it's been a busy week. I have gotten back into my routine after my trip, and I have been working on editing my book. I definitely felt on top of the world when I left my writing adventure. It was so neat, so blissful, and so detached from everything else. And now I'm back in the real world and trying to fit in editing here and there. I'm getting feedback. I'm navigating that. It's a humbling experience. I'm also practicing a lot of self-care to combat that. But I am grateful for people who are willing to help me bring forth my message and make it the best it can be. My oldest lost his first tooth yesterday, and it was hilarious because he came home from school and he said, Mom, guess what came out of my body at school today? It was not how I was expecting to hear about the experience, but very funny. And then he told his dad later that he lost something at school and it was his tooth. My middle son recently ate an ice cream cone almost as big as his face. I have a picture. We are just loving this warmer weather and getting into ways that can then cool us back down. And my youngest just turned two on Mother's Day. He had a puppy party and we did all things dog. We had a little adopt a dog station with stuffed animal puppies and we had little snacks with dog bowls for the vessel of serving, and it was just a really good time. We celebrated the day before Mother's Day so that I could still technically have my own day, but hope you had a good weekend and that you're getting geared up and ready for the summer. I know I am. My guest today is Rachel Taylor, and she is one of those people that is just so good at seeing you, hearing you, feeling your emotions and being with you, helping you to know that your worth is infinite and that you truly have the answers within you. So I will let us get on to the conversation with Rachel Taylor. Oh, I am here with Rachel Taylor. How are you, Rachel? I'm so good. Thank you. Yes, I love your shirt, by the way. Thanks. A little bit on the wild side today. Uh, yes. <laughs> own it to lean into it be yeah. the fullness yes yes well I am so excited to have you on the podcast we talk a lot in person so I'm excited to see how that translates to our conversation here I really just love when it feels organic and natural so I am hoping that we can just be who we are and then show that to the world that would be my wish too I'm really excited Yes. So the theme or the pattern, I should say, this podcast is I like to talk to people and discover who they are and then go into what they do. So let's talk about you a little bit. Who are you? What's your soul like? Just introduce us to you. Okay. Um, Well, my name is Rachel Cox Taylor. Middle name was my maiden name. I never had one. So I got one when I got married. And I enjoy carrying that part around with me. Um, I love where I've come from. I have two great parents and I have four kids who are ages 16, 14, 8, and 10. Um, I absolutely love animals and being in nature. They both fill my soul, just being with animals and feeling the unconditional love that they give to us and uh, really striving for that in my own life to give and receive as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love reading and learning. I am a constant learner. I love helping people see deeper into who they are um, and that also magically and beautifully brings that knowing of myself stronger too as I assist other people in doing that. Uh, Is there anything specific you would like to know? I think that's a nutshell of me. Yeah, I think that was a great nutshell. I've been reflecting recently on just how we introduce ourselves. And I thought you did a great job because a lot of times people will begin by saying who their kids are. And that was 
you know, a little bit into your your explanation. So I love that. I love hearing how you brought your middle name into your or your your maiden name into your new name and just all those things that kind of light you up. So thank you. That was great. One question I did have and that I love to ask people is what is one of your core values? One of my core values, probably my highest core value is unconditional love. Uh, and that is come from, I think, wanting that, wanting to receive that. And wanting to receive that has also just fanned this flame and brought this burning fire and desire to be able to love other people in that way. And I feel like that's what we all want is that being seen and heard and loved in exactly how we're showing up so that we can really feel who we are. So unconditional love is definitely one of my top core values. Yeah. That's so great. And I see you embody that all the time. I've definitely felt your love and seen you love others too unconditionally. So you're you're great at living that core value as well. Thank you. Yes. Well, um, let's see. Where do we want to go next? I met Rachel through the neighborhood that I live in, and we go on walks every Wednesday, and that has been so incredible. I feel like you're so good at at bringing people back to their inner knowing and just listening to their heart, their soul, and. I heard you say one time that you have a soul coach and I just had never heard it put that way before. And I love that phrase soul coach because you're you're working with the whole soul. You know, it's not just your thoughts or your, you know, your actions, but it's just all of it. So I, I really love how that all encompasses. How did you meet your soul coach? Um, so. They don't even call themselves a soul coach. I kind of assigned them that name. And I would say that I've had many soul coaches. And one of the themes that I love is being more in alignment with who I am. And I seek that. I seek that through teachers and books and programs and just bettering and improving myself. And as I've gone through my life, I found these different soul coaches. and. What I've discovered makes a soul coach for me is someone who points me to myself, someone who points me to the truth of who I am, kind of like you said. But it has been a journey for me to find that person who I am. And gaining that awareness has given me the desire to help other people discover who they are so they can walk through life in confidence um, without a mask, without fear of showing what they really love, what they're really interested in, what they want to do, who they want to become. So yes, I've had many soul coaches in my life and they've been the ones who haven't been showing up to say, you got to do it this way because this will help you with X, Y, and Z. They're the ones who said, what is your heart telling you in this moment? How are you feeling about this decision? When did you turn to ask, you know, in your prayers or in your meditations for what your truth is. And I've had a lot of teachers and not all of them do that. And the ones that have, have always been the ones that have shown me stronger who I am. And I'm so grateful for all of the soul, soul coaches that have showed up in my life. Yes, that's beautiful. I feel like many people think we we think with our minds, but we think with our whole body. And I, I'm learning that as well, as you are, have, have said, and as you are, I haven't always been as in tune with my body as I feel like I am now. And it's just so neat to feel the truth of things and to know the truth of things. And so, yeah, there's nothing like it. Yeah. I love that you brought that up. I agree. I think from a young age, we start to be told, like, we'll say, oh, I, I don't feel good or don't like that or my stomach hurts and it'll just be like, oh, you're okay. You're a big girl or you're a big boy. And it's brushed away at a young age and coming to feel our souls, our, our true selves requires us to, to, to become in a way that 
that parent, that leadership that wasn't there and to take that role and say, oh, my stomach hurts. What's going on? Is there something I don't like? Is there something I need to change? What am I telling myself if we show up to be that listener in that moment? I love that you brought that up. Yeah, that's so true. I am in a course called Self-Assured Motherhood, and the section that we're on right now is Discovering Our Life's Purpose. And so she encouraged us to think of different life turns and things that have happened and use that as a window into what we feel like our purpose might be. And so I've been reflecting on that, and I think mine might be sort of some sort of a mentor. I really love just showing other people that there's different ways to do things and exploring all that so would you're really good at that I see that in you (laughs) that thank you and you're so willing to share all the time I I love that about you yes and what would you say you feel like your life purpose is I know that's a huge question but maybe even along the lines of what we were talking do you feel like it is a soul coach role because you've had so many of those people in your life that touched you that way okay so my purpose I have a purpose statement And my purpose is to give and receive unconditional love, to breathe gratitude and joy, and to help guide others to a remembrance of who they are as their highest self. And that's my purpose. Like I I feel it with all my being and I know purposes can also change throughout life and the focus can, but that is what lights me up. It makes me happy. It brings me joy. And I think sometimes we struggle so hard to be like, oh, what's my purpose? And am I going to mess this up? We don't have some purpose we're going to miss. We have what we create our purpose to be. And the thing that we can create is what brings us the most happiness and find, follow the bread trail trails of joy. And when we're following the breadcrumbs of joy, then all of a sudden it's there and we realize this is what I was made for because we allowed ourselves to follow the joy. So when I say that my purpose is to help other people come to remembrance of who they are and their their inner being and their high self. I feel so much joy doing that. And I don't expect anyone else to feel that same joy. Some people will, but we all have our own joy and our own spark. And I love that we do. Yeah. So great. I love that you were able to just say that in in its form. So I am working towards that. And We've talked about this before. I love finding people who are 10 steps ahead of me so I can, you know, I I can figure out the path and and watch their journey and make mine my own within that. And we're all 10 steps ahead in different areas. So true. You know, and that's the beautiful part is that, you know, I love that you're creating community and a place where people can share and lift each other up in the part that they're 10 steps, steps behind. So it's it's what we're made for to to give that that helping hand and those steps that we have already climbed. And and that's what brings us joy is that, oh, yeah, I did take those steps and here, come here. And again, that's another way to find our purpose is what have you focused your steps on the most? Because that's what's bringing you joy. And that's maybe where you can serve and help and contribute in your life. Yes, definitely. That's so good. Okay, so I know these are very intertwined, but let's move on a little bit to what you do. So how is it that you help people remember who they are and bring them back to themselves? So what I'm currently doing, I have, we call them clients. But the when my clients first started coming to me, they would say, oh, I'm here for my therapy session. And that didn't set well. It didn't set well because to me, it felt like it trapped people in a mindset that they're fixing themselves. This is their time where they're fixing themselves. I don't believe that people are broken. Mm-hmm. What I believe is that we've forgotten who we are at our core. Mm-hmm just from living life. 
from the trauma we've experienced from people telling us what we should believe, what we should do, how we should behave, what we should wear, the list goes on. We forget who we are. It's so easy to do. And most of us have. And so what I do is when my clients sit with me or online, we will center ourselves and I'll breathe with them and we'll breathe into our hearts and we'll breathe in love and we'll breathe out fear. And we'll come to a place where we're connected to love and light and truth to God, whatever you call a higher power, we connect to that higher power together. And when we are both in alignment with that higher power inside of us, then the, my client speaks and I listen. And as I listen, I just, I just hear what they're saying. And, and after they're done speaking with whatever is going on in their life, Usually for that week, they can talk about things from their past, but whatever's on their mind, whatever's on their heart, they let go. And then we go through what they've shared. And I will ask them questions. It's very intuitive what I do, but I will ask them questions. I will bring up things that maybe they didn't notice they said mm -hmm. and that they focused on. And they always, and I'm not saying this lightly, they will always know their answer in the end of the conversation. They will know their truth. And remembering session by remembering session, I see them become empowered. I see them become aligned with unconditional love, with knowing who they are as a being of love, not fear. And I see their ability to make decisions, their ability to understand why they feel the way they do opens up. And where there was darkness in their hearts and in their souls, light floods in and it becomes a remembrance of who they are. And I also tell my clients that they don't need me hmm. and they don't to this point they don't need me once they can learn how to connect that inner knowing and once they can see their truth and feel their truth they hear me and I reflect back to them what they know is true already but they learn to strengthen this within themselves. So I'm a facilitator. I am a person who basically turns on a recognition and creates this path for them to walk down to wholeness and to light and to truth. So they need me, but they don't. They need me to help them get started and then my ultimate goal is that they go on and they free themselves and they know that they have everything within them that they possibly need and they have the tools to get there and they have the confidence and the strength to do it. Right. That is so beautiful. I love even just hearing about the process. That's wonderful. And I know I've experienced that with you. So that's beautiful. I know it's different probably too for every person, but I'm I'm wondering what the power is there. Probably, like you said, initially, people just being seen and heard. And, you know, it, it kind of connotes to a little bit of permission or validity, you know, as you remind them who they are, that they really are capable. You're just giving them a gentle push in that direction that mm -hmm. they're they're worth it and that they do, you know, that have that inner knowing and they just need to remember. Yeah, I remember one time. You said something to me and you, you said that when we were talking that I was like a reflection to you, that, that you saw yourself reflected in what I would share. And that's a beautiful thing with, with human beings because we all have this divinity within us. And something magical happens when we come together seeking that divinity within us is all of a sudden 
it, it's, it can be harder to see in ourselves that when sometimes when we hear someone else speaking or see someone else, we have this recognition because we see it like this reflection from a mirror and we're like, oh my, and we feel it in our hearts. And then we see it in our eyes in the mirror and all of a sudden we're like, wow, I am this amazing thing that I feel in this person or I am this amazing thing that I felt when I'm with them. I, I see me again. I remember me again. And we come back to life mm -hmm. and we feel it. And that's one of the beautiful things of being vulnerable and finding people that we can create that with. And someone we can trust and and create those kind of communities together where you can gather and be that reflection for one another and and bring each other to that light. Yes. This conversation is conjuring up experiences that I've had with other people. And it's I'm I'm saying it somewhat jokingly, but it's also the truth where sometimes you'll go to people because you know they'll validate an idea that you have or an experience. And it's because like you said, they're reflecting what you truly want. Whereas other people, they try to shut it down or they try to say, oh, don't do that, you know, and they're they're quieting your inner knowing. And so, uh, yeah, it's, that's just what it reminded me of like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go talk to this person about this because I know that she'll get what I'm trying to say, you know. So. Yes. And it's like talking about soul coach. Soul coach to me is someone who points you to your soul. They don't point to themselves and say, I'm the authority. And if you do it this way, it's going to work. Like, if you do it this way, if, if you do it your way, it's not going to be as successful. But you have this inner knowing. The person, a soul coach, somebody will always point you back to your truth and your power and empower you. Yeah, it's neat. It's This has been causing me to remember people that have been that definition in my life, a soul coach, because I can, I can pinpoint it and I, I feel it's power. And I know that that's the true way to do things. That's how we're going to grow and evolve and, and be our best version of ourselves or be in alignment with ourselves because we're, we're following the people that lead us back to us. So that's great. Yeah, I agree. Great. Well, what is a message that's on your heart that you'd love to share with my audience today? Is there something that's coming to mind that you've been thinking about sharing? Um, you know, I think the biggest thing, your audience, I think would be mostly women, or just probably some men, um, maybe a lot of mothers. And I think if I were to give a message to mothers and to women and fathers, if you're listening to, it will apply, is to not put yourself second. Put yourself first. And this is why a lot of years I put myself third, fourth, fifth in my life, and I forgot who I was. Because that's not how our souls work. I know that a lot of times we're taught, oh, well, you can't be selfish. Don't put se be selfish. This isn't your time to worry about yourself. You have all these people to take care of. What I mean, yes, you'll feed your children before you feed yourself. What I mean when I mean be selfish is make sure that you are doing the things that feed your soul. Following the breadcrumbs to joy. Uh, reading the books that uplift you and inspire you, taking time to take care of your body, taking time to connect with your higher self, with your inner being, with, with God, with the universe, whatever you call it, with that higher power inside of you. Because it is so easy to lose ourselves in the side callings of life like we go through phases we're not always going to be mothers to young children I remember one time I was speaking to someone who just had all of their kids become empty you know she was she became an empty nester all of her kids had flown and 
she didn't know who she was. And she didn't know what she would do. But more importantly, she didn't even know what she liked anymore. And that was when my children were very young that this happened. And I, she reflected back to me in that moment that I was kind of becoming that. Like I couldn't pinpoint the things that I really loved, the things that really lit me up with joy, other than the smiles of my kids and the activities that I did for them. So there's a balance. And if you will fill yourself first, if you will follow your breadcrumbs for joy, if you will do all of that, you will show up happier. You will show up wiser. You will show up with more unconditional love for everyone in your family, your significant other, and your children. And you will be able to always be there for yourself in your life, depending on whatever you are fulfilling, whatever role, whether it be motherhood, um, you know, being a daughter, being a wife, that's not who you are. You're not those roles. You are that divinity within you. And if you lose connection with that divine part in you, you will never feel fully fulfilled. You'll always feel a little bit or a lot of an emptiness inside of you. If you feel that way right now, that is what is missing. I will tell you that right now. It is that connection with that divine part inside of you that you need to put first so you can share it with the people you love. You can share it with your friends. You can share it with your family, with your kids. That's who you need to be in your life. Hmm. That's a beautiful message. Thank you so much. And I feel like it just aligns right with what I teach and am doing and living. And I'm so glad that you're a beta reader for my book because you'll see a lot of those tones in there. Because when we do fill our cup, we show up as a much better mother when it's not than when it's not full. If we're feeling bothered by our children, it's because we're not living out our life's purpose. And so we feel, you know, buried by what we're doing instead of, you know, coming to it from a place of joy and willingness. Absolutely. And then one other thing I wanted to say too is that you you hit the nail on the head too. Our purpose transcends our roles and responsibilities. That is the overarching mission and goal. And then whatever role we're in, we're able to show up with that purpose in some way or form or make sure that we're filling that purpose and that need and then showing up as in that role. Absolutely. Yes. And your purpose, you know, remember, there's like not one thing you're here on earth to do. Follow the joy. You're, you're always led to your purpose through what brings you joy. And when you're joyful, I mean, you're spreading it all over and everybody benefit. So true. Okay, well, thank you so much for this conversation. It feels like a little piece of heaven. And then now <laughs> back to regular life, I don't know. But <laughs> where can people you get to get- bring all the heaven with us? <laughs> yes, for sure. Where can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more or work with you? Well, right now I'm on Facebook and it's Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, Cox, Taylor. And I'm also on Instagram and it's Rachel underscore Cox underscore Taylor. Uh, I will be, I'm on the, in the process of building some other things that are going to be really exciting coming up. So I'd love for you to follow me there and get to know you. I'm building a community uh, filled with unconditional love and joy and gratitude and really anchoring down and remembering who we are so good thank you well it was been it's been great to get to know you and your soul and to have you share that with all of us thank you thank you for having me and i just love you jen so i want you to know that thank you for what you do for all of us thank you rachel you're welcome thank you as always to blaine from ride the wave media for producing this episode And if you want to start your own podcast, be sure to reach out to me or him. Please leave me a review and follow me on Instagram at is for adversity. Something new that we're starting with the Daybreak Business community is Monday meetups. These are once a month, the first Monday of the month from 1030 to noon 
at Bingham Creek Park. So if you're local, come join us there. It's a great way to meet other moms or people in your neighborhood, find out what they're doing, other business or side hustle, and just let your kids play and get some connection. 